Hello, my friends, how are you doing? In this part of the workshop, we are going to talk about the latent image, more specifically, the latent input into the K-sampler. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of how to use AI because it is very simple and yet at the same time, you can get a lot of variety and artistic expression out of that. To follow my workshop, you can download my workflow on OpenArt. You see here, there's a download button and above that, you have a green button that says launch workflow where you can actually run my workflow in the cloud for free. When you click on that button, it takes a little while and then it's opening up this window. As you can see here, everything I've built for you is in here. You don't have to download or install anything. This is completely prepared for you. Now, of course, the question is, what is actually a latent image? The images that you usually see on your screen, they are made from pixels. But AI can't really deal with pixels. It needs a different kind of format. So the pixels are encoded into latent points. Even though it's called a latent image, there is no image left. It's just a big pile of latent points. So let's start here with a little reiteration of what we already have done last time. So here we have the simple text to image workflow. This is the most basic thing you can do. Over here, we are loading the checkpoint. We have our two text prompts. They are going into the case sampler. And down here, we have our empty latent image. It's empty because there is nothing in there. Then we have here our VAE. This is kind of optional, but I like the choice because for different models, you can use different kinds of VAEs that work better with that model. And then here you can see we have the decode. And in this case, it actually looks pretty good because we have a close up of a person. So the face is pretty big and there are no very small details in here. So for that, it works really beautiful. But sometimes you need a higher resolution, especially if you have a person who is smaller in the image. For example, here now I rendered a different image where we have the full body and now the head and the face are a lot smaller. But what you can also see in this case is that the face because it is so small doesn't really have good detail and also it doesn't look very good it looks a little bit deformed because there's just not enough information in here but also because often the model of the AI is not trained to create images in such a small resolution in nice details so for that we need to actually upscale the image so i'm going to show you a process on how to do that now before we go to the next step we want to disable this part here this group so it's not rendering images in the background and taking away our gpu power for that you want to right click up here on this bar and then you want to go and set it to bypass group nodes then you can see that everything here has turned pink. This means it's not going to be used. So now when you move this up, you will see that here you have the next group. For our example, this is the next workflow we are going to work with. So again, right click up here. But in this case, instead of bypass, you want to set group nodes to always. And as you can see, now all of them are active again. So in this case, when we look at the different nodes we have here, overall, we are doing basically the same thing. We have here our checkpoint, we have our prompts, we have the empty latent image and the VAE. Here is our case sampler. But now something different happens because now we have here upscale latent by and then we have a second case sampler in here. Let's have a closer look at that process. And you will also notice there is a little bit of extra complexity in here. Now, this is because I have here VAE decode in a preview because I want to see what the original image looks like. Now, this is very good because it can help me to decide if I actually like the image before I upscale that. Now here on the right side, you can see you have this window and in there you have a function that's called view queue. When you click on that, you have running and pending. Now, when you are starting to render the image and you see the preview down here, you don't like it. You can go in this running area and you can click on cancel for the image that is still rendering. So you're saving on time and on GPU power. Another thing to point out here about the process of decoding and having a preview of this is that you can basically at any stage, at any point inside of ConfUI, create these little probes that show you what is happening. 
This can happen for images. It can also happen for text. So this gives you a preview inside of the process if the process is working correctly and you get the results you desire. So use these little tests here often and then afterwards if everything is working perfectly for you you can delete these parts out of your workflow to make the workflow cleaner again. In this case I keep it in here because I want to show you the difference between the image in the low resolution and then in the higher resolution. So let's look at the process here. We have here our case sampler. The latent is going out into our upscale latent by node. Now the upscale latent by node helps me in the sense that this is basically multiplying the width and the height. So I don't have to think about what is the actual size I want to have. I just have to think about by how much do I want to make the image bigger. Also you have here upscale methods. I want to invite you to try around with them. Now after of course we are sending this into the second case sampler latent image input here. So here we have the second case sampler. It is using the same model and the same prompts. In this case, you can actually also input other positive and negative prompts if you want to. Sometimes this can help you. For example, you can put other information in the prompt, like for example, putting more emphasis on the detail you want to have in there or to point out different other things. For example, you want to have more bokeh in the background, things like that. So actually in this step, you can also influence how the image is going to be upscaled. Another thing you will realize here is that I'm using a denoise that is pretty high. In this case, 0.55. The reason for the high denoise is that the latent upscale image is going to be blocky or noisy. So it's not going to look nice. So if our denoise is too low, we're going to have fragments inside of our rendered image. We don't want to have that. So you want to set the denoise higher. And in addition to that, I want to invite you to try out different samplers. So instead of using the exact same sampler, you could, for example, go in here and try, for example, DPM++2M plus plus with a Keras scheduler in here that can actually give you a nicer image, but you can also leave it like that. Or let's go here with Euler Ancestral. And then we have here a scheduler of normal. With that said, you can simply render your image. You can see that the image has gained a lot more sharpness in there. And also, especially for the face, a lot more detail in here. So it's a lot more beautiful. Of course, some of the details have changed in here. This is because of the high denoise that we are using, but it should still be pretty close to the original. In this case, you can actually see that it has fixed part of the image. So in that case, on the left side, you can see that the jacket is actually open. But in this case, you can also see that the jacket is cut short here and does actually not look correct. Now in the finished image, you can see that the jacket is actually closed, but also that it is much more accurate. So that looks actually a lot nicer. Another thing I want to point out here is that I'm using this upscaling here as a step before I'm using the ultimate upscaler and make an even larger size with that. The reason for that is with the ultimate upscaler, you're using a low denoise value to stick as close as possible to the original image. However, if you only have very bad details in the original image, you're not going to get a good upscale out of the ultimate upscaler. So doing this latent upscale before you go into the ultimate upscaler can actually help you a lot to get really amazing image quality. Thank you for watching this episode of my workshop. Check out the next videos where we dive even deeper in what you can do with the latent input. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.